Hey everybody, it's Ripley again. Welcome back. Oh, we're going to start having some fun now. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to talk about linearization and differentials. Now, let me explain what this means. Linearization, differentials is a little bit crazy, but let's talk about linearization first. Linearization, all that it means is using a tangent line, a tangent line, to approximate, to approximate the behavior of a curve, okay, the behavior of a function. Now, you may say, well, well, Ripley, why do we have to use the tangent line to approximate it? Well, let's just look for just a sec. First and foremost, I think the, the bottom line with all this is that lines are easier to deal with than functions most of the time. Okay, now let's say that we have a function that does this. Okay, and then we've got its tangent line. Let's see if I can do this without screwing this up. And then we've got a tangent line that does this. Okay, now look close. Let's say that this is tangent at the point x comma y. Now, we've already talked about tangent lines as far as if I get really, really close to that point of tangency, as I zoom in on that, the line and the curve become the same almost, except out here at the edges of the interval, you can't tell the difference. They're indecipherable from one another, which means that we can use the line itself, we can use this guy to approximate values for this guy, and sometimes that's just flat out easiest. All right, it's just an easier way to do this. Now, let me show you. I'm going to do this with a real function first, and then we'll play around with some with some more applied stuff. Okay, let me go back to my black pen here. So let's say that f of x equals uh, let's go x cubed. Now let's go x squared. Let's go x squared. Keep it simple. And the way that the that the directions are going to read in problems like this. And you got to start being able to identify these uh, types of problems by the way in which they're written. We're going to use the linearization, linearization to approximate um, f of, let's say, 3.1. Okay? Now, you may say, Ripley, why do I need a line to approximate that? 3.1 squared. I could just throw it in my calculator. Well, sometimes it's easier to use these linearizations than it is to just throw these things in your calculator, particularly when the functions are nasty. Okay, whoa, what just happened there? I have no idea what just happened there. Let's go ahead and turn. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. All right, sorry. The ghost in the machine just took over. I don't know what went wrong. Anyway, sorry. Um, Sometimes it's just easier to use these linearizations. The other thing to remember is that back in the day, remember, we're studying a 300-year-old mathematics. <clears throat> Excuse me. Back in the day, people didn't have calculators to throw these into. So if I'm talking about, uh, you know, if I want to use it to approximate 3.082, 3 now that's ugly. Nobody wants to do that by hand. You know what I mean? And, and those guys in particular didn't want to do it by hand. So what they did is they said, wait, let's use the properties of, of this calculus that we're learning to help simplify our lives a little bit. And then we can see how far off we are once we've worked through it. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about a linearization. Linearization is just fancy for tangent line. Okay, so watch. If I'm going to try and figure out the linearization to approximate 3.1, what we need to do is we need to figure out a point that's really close to 3.1. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the tangent line where it's going to be at x equals 3. All right, now why? Well, let's think about that. We're going to draw a sketch, a really badly drawn sketch. Here's y equals x squared. And then out here at x equals 3, this is where we're going to draw our tangent line. It's going to sit right here. Whoops. It's going to sit right there. Now then what we're going to do is we're going to use, again, notice that this line and this curve at 3.1 aren't a whole lot different. I'm just going to simply use this line. Okay? Now, watch how this works. This is kind of fun. Let's change back to, to black. It's just a better thing to work with. All right, so first things first. F of x 
equals x squared, and we're talking about x equals 3. All right, so first things first, f of 3, I need a point to work with, which is 9. So now I'm in my brain, I've got, okay, I'm working from the point 3 comma 9. I need the slope of a line. So f primed of x is 2x, and f primed of 3 is 6. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if you recall, back in the day, I go y minus, I'm just going to use point slope because it's the easiest one to work with, uh, y minus 9 equals 6 times x minus 3. Now I'm going to do something funky here, and you'll, you'll see why after we start talking about differentials. I'm going to write this as y equals 6 times x minus 3 plus 9. Now, I didn't really say a particular form that I wanted you to write the line in, right? Um, so I'm, I'm going to leave this. Now, what we're going to say is we're going to say that the linearization of the function, I'm just going to call it L of x, which is approximately equal to the function f of x. The linearization is this guy right here. All right? The line is approximately the function. All right, now watch what happens. I'm actually going to leave it like this, and I think you'll appreciate why in just a sec. Watch. If I'm going to use the line to approximate 3.1, watch how nicely this pops out. I go 6 times 3.1 minus 3 plus 9. Well, this guy is equal to 6 times, well, 3.1 minus 3, last I checked, is just 0.1 plus 9, right? 6 times 0.1 is 0.6, and this ends up being 9.6. Now, throw 3.1 squared in your calculator, and you'll realize that it's 9.61, which is pretty cool. I mean, we got pretty close, right? I mean, you may say, well, how close did we get? Depends on how precise we need to be. Now, your author, the esteemed author, excuse me, takes great pains to rewrite this as, now watch, don't be afraid. He says that the linearization is equal to f primed at a times x minus a plus f of a. Now look at that. All that that really is is, this is slope, right? Right here, this is just slope, this is just m. And then this guy right here, this f of a, it's just the y value. Think of this as being x naught from our point and y naught from our point. Right? That's all it is. It's just a fancy way of writing. So now, now here's the cool part. Once I have the linearization, I'm going to kick over. Remember, it was, let's see, let's see if I can remember what it was. The linearization was equal to, what was it, 6 times x minus 3 plus 9. I can use this thing to approximate all kinds of values around 3. Remember, I'm around 3 here. So if I want to do, I don't know, let's do, I want to figure out what, um, hold on, I want to figure out what, say, f of, f of 3.29 uh, is. Well, now that's too close. Let's go 3.029, right? So 3.029, right? That's pretty close to 3, isn't it? Well, this is going to be approximately equal to L of 3.029, right? And I'm going to get 6 times 3.029 minus 3. I don't know where that parenthesis came from. Minus 3. Hold on. My eraser's not working here. 3.029 minus 3 plus 9. And this just ends up being 6 times 0 0.029, relatively easy to multiply rather than square, right? Plus 9. Okay, and then if I take what is 6 times 0 0.029, what is that? What about 0 0.14, 6, 54, 5, 12, what is that? 0.174? So this equals 0 0.174 plus 9, which is equal to 9.174. Now let's see how close we got. What is, I'm going to use my calculator, 3.029 squared. I'm not going to bring up the calculator because we can do this quick. I got 9.1748. So the true value of f of 3.029, if f of x is equal to x squared, not x cubed, what a thing gone, I end up with 9.1748. 41, exactly. We're pretty darn close.
Now, 